Hello world, my name is Konstantinos, and this time it's the interface aggregation principles turn to be brought in our spotlight. It will get the usual treatment as the previous ones. We will analyze it, break it down, and of course see examples, since it's my favorite way of understanding a new concept, as well as teach it. In the previous video, we saw a Liskov substitution principle. While not that difficult, it's still the toughest principle in SOLID. On the other hand, today's principle is the flip side of LSP. It's pretty easy and intuitive. And from my experience, once developers become aware of its existence, it has the best adoption out of the five, mainly because it's straightforward to implement. However, do not let your guard down just yet. Most applications have some sort of violation of the interface aggregation principle. And today, we will break down our examples down into two sections. First, we will implement interface aggregation on a scenario of a newly developed feature, one that you could be creating now. But then, we will say hello to the real world, which says, most probably, you're going to be refactoring someone else's code, therefore, not have the luxury to apply everything on its proper time. How would you handle a violation of the interface aggregation on an existing code base without refactoring or breaking multiple classes? Let's look at a bit of history. Interface aggregation principle was defined by Robert Martin, our beloved Uncle Bob, while consulting for a company named Xerox to help them build software for the new printer systems. He defined it as, clients should not be forced to depend upon interfaces that they do not use. Put very simply and quickly, you can notice a violation of the principle whenever you see something like that, having to override a method of an interface, but leaving it blank. You may be thinking, well, it sounds easy. Why would we bother with such a profound concept? <laughs> well, if you're thinking that, I like your confidence. But as mentioned before, easy does not always come without its straps. As a code base evolves, it's actually quite common to violate this principle, and we will jump on an example right away. All right, let's see some code. We have uh, a scoreboard application today. We're building scoreboards, and uh, currently we have an interface, um, a scoreboard that has three methods, show match started, show match finished, and show goal scored. Um, and we have a football scoreboard that implements that interface. For example's sake, I've only put print statements inside, but obviously inside is one of those methods you would have um, true functionality for your application. So where's the problem? Currently, no problem. But the, pro the first problem arises the moment I decide to add a new scoreboard in my application. Let's say that now I need to support tennis. So if we were to create a tennis scoreboard class, on my starting we can say tennis match started and tennis match ended, but show goal scored, there are no goals in tennis. What are we gonna do here? I'll probably leave that interface blank. And uh, if you remember from the slide previously, whenever we see that pattern here, this is an obvious violation of the interface aggregation principle. So what do we do now? We obviously cannot leave it like that, but we need all those methods. The answer is the segregation of the interfaces we have to split the functionality into different interfaces so that clients should only depend upon those that are needed. So let's see how we're gonna do that. So our first action should be to create a new interface that's gonna be for football only functionality. We can create that and we're gonna add the only method that we currently have for football, which is the show goal scored method. Of course, the compiler is going to warn us about the error that there is no show goal scored method inside scoreboard. However, football scoreboard is not just a scoreboard. It's a football scoreboard. And the compiler error disappears. Tennis scoreboard still has the error, but tennis scoreboard does not need the show goal scored method. So we can delete that and everything is back to normal. Final step, we should refactor the name of the scoreboard because it's a pretty bad name. We can say basic scoreboard and I'm going to put the if in the end to show that it's an interface to keep um, the consist consistency with a football scoreboard 
and we're pretty much done. We've successfully segregated the interfaces. We have separate concerns inside the interfaces and it looks a bit like the single responsibility principle, but on abstractions. So now if we were to add, let's say, a new type of event, let's say that we're going to be supporting basketball matches, I'm going to create a new class. Name it basketball scoreboard. This is a basic scoreboard, but it's not a tennis match anymore, so we're going to copy that and paste that. Okay, so much started, so much finished, but basketball also has periods. And uh, where should we put periods? We cannot put it inside the basic scoreboard interface because other matches should do not have periods. We cannot put it on the football. Obviously, it's not a football match. So we're going to create a new interface. This is going to be a basketball scoreboard and has, um, so let's say, period started. And we can also have a period ended. Great. Now, the basketball scoreboard is not just a basic scoreboard, but it's a basketball scoreboard. And of course, we need to implement the members. Android Studio kindly gives me the overrides. Thank you very much. And we can say a pretty basic print just for the example's sake. Basketball period started and basketball period ended perfect so we have our interface segregation in place welcome back and if you found that example simple it's because it is like i said the isp is a very simple straightforward guideline that tells us basically that we should split our interfaces into smaller and more specific parts so that clients can pick the part that they want, essentially composing their functionality. This way, our client classes know as little as possible. The football scoreboard does not know that we have tennis in the application. It should not know that, but the readers of the code, us developers, benefit immensely from that. Just by looking at the implemented interface, we know what that client does, but also does not do. We restrict the clients, but that's a good thing because restriction leads to better guidance for the future of the evolution of any class. Now, let's see how we could tackle a violation of the ISP in an existing application. All right, so we have an existing application and we find ourselves in this situation. We see we have two classes, the football scoreboard and the basketball scoreboard, and they all depend on the scoreboard event listener. So what they do is they register at a dispatcher and uh, that dispatcher has a register listener method that takes in a scoreboard event listener. And then they implement those um, overrides that um, derive from the scoreboard event listener. Let's see the scoreboard event listener. Of course, it has those five methods. So they're all in a single bucket, in a single interface. And we have the event dispatcher, which basically uh, handles all the logic to dispatch events to the listeners. It has that pri that public method register listener we saw before, through which clients can register and listen to events. So back again with the scoreboards, football scoreboard, basketball scoreboard. The problem here, as you probably understand, is that we have those unused methods. And it's puzzling to see those empty methods. You don't even know why, why they're there. It's obviously a sign of a bad design. But this is an existing code, which means I cannot just go here and start meddling with this interface, deleting methods, adding them to a single, a second interface, and so on. I need to be much more careful because the stakes are higher. I could break something in production. I could, I could break something at a place that I didn't intend to break. So let's see a better way. Let's see a way that could use uh, more of a soft approach to it. Let's use a middleman. What I mean by that is that, okay, those scoreboards obviously uh, do not need to depend on the scoreboard event listener. They don't have to, and they shouldn't. Because as long as they depend on that scoreboard event listener, they will always have those unused methods. So what we're going to do is this. First of all, we need a second interface. Let's say that this is the football event listener football 
scoreboard event listener. That's a mouthful. And football scoreboard event listener obviously doesn't have periods, but it has a show goal score, show red card, and show yellow card. And somehow, I need to make the, the football scoreboard depend on that new interface. But once I do that, I have a problem. I have a problem because those two overrides are unneeded. You may think to yourself, okay, that's good. I don't need them. Can I delete them? You could, but look at that. This dispatcher here is a problem because this dispatcher does not need a football scoreboard event listener. It requires a scoreboard event listener. So that's a problem. So let's undo that change for a minute and see how else can we approach this issue. We see this event dispatcher. My thinking is this. I'm going to create a middleman. I'm going to create a new class that's going to stand between those scoreboards and the dispatcher. It's going to be a way to throttle all those unneeded events and expose only the interface that's, uh, that's required by each client. Let's see this in action because um, it's kind of difficult to explain without implementing it. Basically, I need, first of all, a football event dispatcher. And this football event, event dispatcher is much like all the other clients of the football scoreboard event listener, which, by the way, I don't need to do that just yet, of the, uh, so of the scoreboard event listener. So what I'm going to do is actually I am going to um, implement the scoreboard event listener. And of course, yes, I need to implement all those members. Thank you, Android Studio. I needed that. Let's pause for a second here. We have a listener that's a scoreboard event listener, but this shouldn't be the case. This listener should be basically... Um, a football event listener. Scoreboard event listener. There we go. And of course, the register listener method now takes a football scoreboard event listener as an argument. Next, we create in the init block, we create uh, first of all, let's declare a dispatcher. This dispatcher is much like the dispatchers that we have on the other clients, right here. We have the private val dispatcher, that's an event dispatcher here, and we also have another one here. So the same way we register ourselves as a listener to this dispatcher, we're going to do it in the football event dispatcher. Now, as we said, that class here has to implement all the methods. But that's not the problem because this class is not going to be used anywhere else. This is simply a buffer for the rest of the application. So this can be, this can, this can take all the damage from the unused interfaces. However, we still have that listener here that's a football scoreboard event listener. So we can do that since we can register. Show goal scored, football has a goal scored. So if we say listener dot, it exposes only the three football functions. So what we're gonna do is so show goal scored there, then show red card here, and finally show yellow card. Those two methods, of course, do not have an implementation, but we don't really mind because we have set up a very good abstraction here. Back to our event uh, file, we have the football uh, scoreboard and it's a scoreboard event listener. That's a problem. We, s we need it to be a football scoreboard event listener. And what we can do is instead of an event dispatcher, now we can have a football event dispatcher. We can create that, register ourselves as a football scoreboard listener, and now we can safely remove those unneeded overrides. And look at that, football scoreboard has no compiler errors. We're pretty much fine from this side. And we safely cleared up this class. We implemented the interface aggregation on an existing code base, being very careful just by adding this one new class. So this is a very neat trick in order to approach this issue. Of course, we can do the same for the basketball scoreboard in exactly the same way which I'm not going to do here, but it's a good exercise. You should do it yourself. Try to create a 
a football a basketball event dispatcher and create a basketball scoreboard event listener as an interface for the score the basketball scoreboard class and you're gonna end up with something like that you're not gonna have those three methods here you're gonna be like that but you shouldn't have this compiler error so follow exact follow the exact steps that I followed for the football scoreboard and you're gonna end up with a pretty clean result. Wow, that was a lot to process, but uh, frankly, as always, repetition is the key to understanding these concepts. Do not keep watching unless you implemented that basketball interface. And once you do, you will have already understood the essence of the ISP. At this point, I want to address a couple of things. First, that whenever we add a new method to an existing interface that will not be needed by every client of the interface, we call it polluting the interface, which I find it to be quite accurate. We strip it of its purity, basically. The second thing I want to point out, and this is a huge discussion potentially, is something that some of you may be thinking, but I see rarely talked about in conjunction to the interface aggregation principle, and one could say rightfully so. What about default implementations? Well, Kotlin, among others, has this feature where you can basically do this. Provide a default implementation, even leave it blank, and clients will not need to implement this method anymore. Or they can still override it if they want to. In my opinion, this should not interfere with your quest for a better design. The point of this principle is to not only clear the visible issues, which is basically the unused methods getting in your way, but strive for the best separation of concerns and interfaces, which will improve your code, your code flexibility and overall quality. So keep segregating your interfaces. And that's it for the ISP. Four down, one to go in this solid series. Study the concepts again and do not hesitate to contact me for further explanations. I will see you in the next one.